How you doing today? My name is Leonard Earl Howes, and I am part of the production and play Salvage at the Hudson Theater. And if you'd like to know a little bit more uh, about us, about our play, about myself, check out these videos to follow. When did I fall in love with theater? I, I fell in love, um, I'm trying to think what, how old was I? I was, it, I was very young. You know, uh, at, at the church I grew up in, uh, which I'm still a member of, they uh, it was a, it's a Baptist church, and they um, would have uh, district conventions. And so, for for the youth to young adult, they would have particular uh, categories for you to take part in. So the young folks got to do uh, Bible storytelling. So take for example. Um, uh, the story of Noah and he's building the ark. And so you were kind of bring that story to life for folks. Um, so from there, that was kind of, that, that was the seedling that was planted. Uh, and then I was very fortunate to be a part of a group called WLSI. Uh, and those were the first initials of uh, two sisters and their husbands. And they put on Christmas plays every year at the Wilshire Ebell Theater. Um, and one of the husbands, um, Mr. Bill Coleman, Willie Coleman, he, he, uh, he owned an Arco station on 54th Street, uh, just near my house. And my mom and I would always stop by there uh, on our way uh, to church and just uh, in all, a lot of our travels, we had to go down the street. And so, you know, that became our, our, our main home gas station. And one day we stopped in and he said to my mom, you know, you, I think Leonard might uh, be good to uh, come take part in our plays. And I, uh, I went in and, and it wasn't even about auditioning because they always found a role for you there. They, it was massive productions where, you know, from little babies all the way up to folks in their 90s. Um, and somehow they would incorporate music. And if you had any kind of skill or talent, somehow they would work it into, uh, work it into the show. Um, and so being on that stage, it really started infusing in me um, this love. Uh, my journey took me on a path that really had folks in my life that were mentors and teachers that started expanding my knowledge of different authors and uh, you know, playwrights and, and, and different forms of theater. Uh, so then I started to get a, a solid educational background within it um, uh, along with that firsthand experience. And so uh, my teacher just, one of my mentors just passed who I've met in ninth grade, Mr. Herbert Holland. Uh, he introduced me to the works of August Wilson. Uh, and they had those drama competitions and we got to go and do fences. And, and, uh, and from there, I went to the renowned uh, Los Angeles County High School for the Arts on the campus of Cal State LA, um, where several dynamic artists have come, come out of, you know, on Kehinde Wiley, just to, name one, Josh Grover, you know, lots of, um, of artists have come through that school and we were getting college training on the high school level. Uh, so it just, it, the love just kept deepening, um, pretty much what I'm trying to say, you know, through, through that course. Uh, and it is where I feel, where I feel at home. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, in whatever capacity uh, I get to express myself as an artist creatively um, through acting and storytelling, uh, I love it. Um, but there's something about live theater. There's something about that exchange between the audience. Uh, there's something about not being able to cut or even stop in the middle of something and say, look, can I take that again? You know, um, it's something very special and very, very spiritual and, and, and magical uh, uh, in that. Um, so that love 
it started, but it's it's ever growing. It's ever growing, uh, as I feel love should. You know, um, it never just stops if if it's really true. My process for becoming a character uh, it starts with the words. It starts with the words, um, and I say the words before I say, you know, the script, because um, so much is there within the words that come about that uh, describe your character. Uh, you know, I remember in school, uh, we, script analysis course was so, was so critical um, because before you could get into what a character was thinking or what a, how a character was moving, you had to see what was going on. You know, one of the, one of the key things I remember um, the teacher always stressed, as much as what you say uh, uh, is important and valuable, um, uh, he stressed what others say about you is so informing and critical to how you develop your character and can inform you with, with the path that, that you're taking. Um, and you know, uh, one of the great things I find for myself and the, the, the teachers and, and mentors I've been able to have um, through my years is that everyone came from a different background and everyone had a different approach that they taught us and shared with us. Um, and so, and, and they emphasized, don't, hear what I'm sharing with you and go, ah, that's not for me and toss it aside. If you don't feel it's for you, still put it in your toolbox, put it in, store it away for yourself because you never know where it might come up for you or who you might be working with where you go, ah, you know what? I can utilize that. Um, and so, process is you know sometimes it 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 comes from all different angles because depending on the time that you have like if you called me and you said uh you know with improv you're having to think on on, on a dime of what i'm going to do with this character and how i'm just going to throw something in and try something and a lot of times it's something coming from your natural personality or or trying to grab something from your your imagination but uh in terms of you know working on this play salvage it was started with the words. It started with what was happening and then the setting and where we are. And all of those things started to infuse what I drew from who the character was. And as that went along and started to unearth that history, then it showed me, okay, this might be, it would inform me, okay, about his walk, you know? Um, and, and, and the interactions he has with the other characters where his voice uh, might sit within him. Um, and so through that is, I mean, for, for just throwing, uh, if, if you want to box it in, I guess you could say there is uh, a method and, and more of, 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 a, of really developing characters. That's what I love to do really where my look would change. You know, this isn't, the look you see now is not how I walk through life and not generally how I um, audition. You know, I'm, I'm usually clean faced and, and, and bald head, but, but depending on what I receive from the character, then I go, oh, you know what? I might need to let my hair grow and let my big bald spot and cowlicks here uh 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 that that seems to be more to what i feel this character is doing you know um and so that's that's kind of a little bit of you know i guess my uh, a process uh, uh for me i heard about salvage about 10 years ago 
I am feel so honored to have been a part of this journey with this play uh, for that duration. Um, my director and best friend, who I call my brother, I uh, introduce him as my brother. We, we met in high school um, and he was directing this play. He was, they were, they were gonna do a, a, a one night only of it. Um, and he called me up and, and asked me if I would be, if I was available to, to come and take part. Um, and I tell you, I, I had been praying about it because I'd been away from theater for a little while. And I, I, in my prayer life, I was asking to get back to theater uh, for, for a door to be opened. Um, and that call came from my dear friend. Uh, and so we, we journeyed to do the, the one night only. And then and it was about, I'm trying to remember the time. And we did two one night only, but I'm trying to, trying to think, I can't remember how much time was in between. I can't remember if it was like a year or something like that. But then we did another one, one night only of it, you know, well received. Uh, then the dream became, to have a run of it. Um, and when that dream came to fruition with our first, uh, first mounting of a run at the Lounge Theater um, through the producers at, uh, with uh, theater planners, uh, it, it, you know, when you have a dream and you see it come to fruition, um, and so what was so exciting about that was we were going to get more time and I feel the, the, the more time you able, you have, you can just keep, keep searching and keep digging so that, uh, so that you get to the, the core essence and the truth, um, of the character of the person. Uh, you get to explore even more, uh, get to play even more. Um, and so we had that run right up towards the uh, end of 2019 uh, into the beginning of 2020. Uh, you know, who knows? We might have had, we might have extended, we kept extending. Uh, we might have had another extension uh, were it not to the, um, to the shutdown and pandemic and everything. But then they called up again and said, hey, we are going to be one of the initial productions to, to come back during this time, to have live theater, you know, with, with vaccinated mask audiences. Um, and so for me to, to be able to come back to this, because there were things, you know, as you're playing and you have that limited run, we're only Friday to Sunday, there were still things that I was like, ooh, and ahas, and, and that later after the production had closed, I'm going, ooh, oh yeah, 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 if we could come back to that. Um, so to be able to come back and, 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 and dig in more um, uh, is a joy. So I've been with it for a good while and, and I'd hope to be with it for a good while longer. You know, it's, it's, I, I told David, uh, my castmate who plays Preacher, I, I said, man, I, this this is one where I, I I could travel with this bad boy. I I uh, I'd love to be on a on a on a couple of year run or so with this. You know, I'd love this for New York audiences to to bear witness to it. Salvage the play. Salvage uh, is about friendship at its core. Friendship and love. Uh, you have two cohorts who have known each other all their lives, pretty much. Um, and events and circumstances within their lives shared have caused them, it's caused a, a, a deep rift between them. But you know how you have a deep rift between someone, but they're like family. And so you, 
you still have to deal with them in your in your physical space. Uh, so my character Johnson um, runs the bar that his father owned, uh, and Preacher is a daily placement fixture, will you say, uh, in this bar, um, and we just deal with one another, even though there's a lot of things ruminating within Johnson that he would love to say, but he keeps it buried inside until the presence of a young man comes in and, and he shakes our world up. Uh, he shakes Preacher's world up initially, but as his visit there and his time there, it starts to rattle Johnson as well. And, and, and I guess in essence gives Johnson the chutzpah, the wherewithal to say, you know what? I'm not going to sit back on all of this that's burning inside me that I need to get out, that I need to say to Preacher. Um, but within it, this tug and pull uh, with, with, with Harley and Preacher of ideals and, and, and morals and, 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 and life and how they, how he's approaching life and he questions Preacher, he, he doesn't hold back. Um, and they all kind of wrestle within this. Uh, and in the midst of that, in the midst of the three of them in this dance of, of dialogue and talking and um, this angelic creature who play, who is the, who is the, uh, the, the wife of, of Harley destiny comes in periodically. Um, and I'll leave some suspense there. There, there, it's a bigger story behind who she is. Uh, but her presence, her presence for the three of us uh, is one that gives each of us pause. The music of salvage, you know, and we don't, we, we say we are a play with music, not a musical. Um, the lyrics, you know, I get made fun of <laughs> by friends and family when a song comes on the radio and I, you know, I might start singing and then there's a part of the song that I really don't know that well. And I'm like, yeah, but you. I have fallen in love with lyrics in a way off of doing this play that was because the lyrics of these songs are so gripping, uh, so thought provoking. Uh, not only with the performances that they do, you know, and it's just the guitar. And so sometimes I feel when you just have something as simplistic as a guitar or a piano, and it's just one instrument playing behind you and you hear that song. Oh, so the music is, is, is so dynamic. But once again, those words, the lyrics, the lyrics and what they're expressing. He, Tim, Tim Alderson was so purposeful in his writing. And, and, and we, we strive to honor that, you know, with our, our memorization, our learning uh, and delivery of the text to honor that writing. And they honor that, you know, because it all coincides. So the lyrics coincide with, with what's being said within the play. It's not a, it's not a standalone, you know, it's, it, it, it's so cohesive and as one, um, I love it. I love, I love, love, love the music of it. And, I, and even if, you know, cause there, there's a little, I guess you would say, um, you're trying to say a genre, like a country, a little bit of folk, but even if that's not necessarily your vibe, mm, this music will still grab you. This music, I, I trust and believe. Yeah. So my 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 fellow castmates, uh, there's 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 my buddy David who plays preacher, who is a just a veteran of of stage, um, you know, stage theater and and film, television. But 
what he is able to do with this performance is I'll just say this. He drinks during the play. He drinks alcohol during the play, right? Um, and so he has to have a journey with partaking. And to see one, just the exploration in rehearsal to where we can't, we've, we, where he's gotten to with it within the, within the last production and within this production of it, um, where you, you, you travel with him. You don't feel that, oh no, he's gone too far. Or, oh, that's too much. No, he has really constructed a journey within that for that is so it's it's like a leech to his character um and the way he moves language i've learned from him uh just being on stage with him it it is he he is so fascinating to watch and listen to and then we have some younger actors who play uh the couple uh uh, uh sam and and natalie um who who are just divine. They are just divine. And the being able to express love and care uh, the way they do on, on, on stage for one another and that those relationship dynamics of friction yet, uh, yet still bonded to someone. Um, they have they have worked and gotten it to a place where they are it's it's effortless for them, and all three of them are dynamic singers. Now myself, you know, uh, Johnson, you you don't really get to hear him do too much, and folks think uh, I said I need a little I need a lot of practice. Uh, you, give, you give me some, you give me some weeks of practice, I can get it. But these three with their singing, ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm like they need to. They, we need to have this on an album, these songs with them, with them, you know? Um, but it is such a joy to be able to be on stage with this cast and to be able to play. I'm having so much fun and so much fun in the exploration of it as well. That's a great thing also about theater that it's different every night because there's something nuanced, whether it's how your day was, whether it's what the audience is giving you, you know, we had a matinee where they might not have clapped. Some folks clap after the song, some folks, but everyone is always listening. Uh, and then we get to my director. You know, I've, I've known this, <laughs> I've known this guy for, since we met in, what was it, 92? Yeah, 1992. It's been a long time. And we, we are brothers through and through, um, short of being blood brothers. We are brothers, and he is a year older, so he was ahead of me, and I always looked up to him with with his dedication uh, and with his talent and skill set as an actor. Uh, and then I got to get to know a different side of him as a director, uh, and bringing because as the director, also you're trying to bring the best out of. Uh, your actors, you're, you're, you're working to, to get them not only where you want them to be for the story, but also for themselves as actors. You know, you want to continue to have them encouraged if something's not working right in rehearsal. Uh, so you want to, to correct them if, if something's not right in rehearsal or if something we've gotten to the stage and things are going awry you know, to get things still, to have it still back right online. And, and he has done that um, so well, so magnificently. I, I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm honored to have him as my director. And it's funny because the other castmate, there's a language that he and I have from years of friendship um, when we're discussing certain things that's happening within the world of the play or the character. And it's funny to see them because... I'll say something and maybe get two or three words out and he's, and he's on it. Cause he's knowing, you know, we just have this, this inner language. So that's, so that's so much fun too. Um, 
my my you know as as my friend but also you know i know the respect i you know i have to yield because we're always friends at the end of the day but as my director he is my leader in this in this effort um uh, but he is he's so he's so dynamic really he uh uh, I can't. I can't wait. I don't know if you you you've interviewed him, met him yet, man. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's cool, cool dog. Our playwright Tim. What I appreciate about him is how humble he is. And I say that because I, I don't think he realizes how good he is, how how beautiful his writing is. Um, you know, as I said before, he is very he was very purposeful in the words he used and, and chose to 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 weave this story here. Um, and in that, he gave of himself in his writing. Um, you 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 get that off the page. It, you know, it's it's um and so he's so humble and so giving and being able to have him there as we navigate things as well is priceless. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful for him. He has become a dear friend, uh, to me, um, in this, in this process. And I, I'm, I'm grateful for that. He, he, um, he, he's special and I, I can't wait. I hope he doesn't stop with just salvage. I hope he, he continues again. I know this is, you know, kind of his baby and he's, you know, looking to see it to grow even more, but I, I, I hope he will share more with us because if this is the beginning, my, 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 my. I would like the audience to, excuse me, to take away from salvage that it's never too late for forgiveness, um, that you can have a different opinion and, and differentiating ideas uh, and still be able to converse, uh, you know, um, to still be able to hear the other person um, and, and willing to, to listen. Uh, however, at times that road to get there may be a rough one. Maybe tough, um, but if you're willing, <laughs> if you're willing to do the work, um, no matter what the relationship is, be it friend or family, workplace, no matter what the relate, if you're willing to strive for the best out of it, that uh, some form of redemption is possible. Uh, something I look for and strive for is telling the story, telling this story that has been written because the audience, they haven't sat down at the table work with us and, and, and gone back and looked, oh, and why is he saying this? And that, they, haven't, they haven't been there with us. So it's my job and I strive to, to tell that story so clearly that there isn't a question for them of what's happening and what's going on, um, and and to be as true and honest within myself as the character in that moment. You know, my character has a the way I've interpreted. You know, the emotional life that is happening within the the course of the play and in that world. You know. Um, Things are hitting him uh, in the gut, in the heart, emotionally, um, mentally, and, and and if that isn't if that isn't uh, as as readily attainable as I would like as an actor on a given night, that. I stay true and honest and not try to push it or force it, but just come from where I am right there and communicate that and communicate within those words 
within what I'm saying and within the telling of that story. And so that's what I strive for um, each performance and each night that we come in to, for that, that honesty. I feel that people, um, they should come to the production of Salvage, one, if you feel comfortable, because we're still in a time where I know my cast or anyone should question your comfortability. Uh, we are requiring that folks be vaccinated to see our production. We are requiring that they wear masks to be in the audience. Um, but that still might not be a comfortable space for some. But first, if, the, if they're comfortable there, then they should come because there's nothing like live theater. There's nothing like it. And in addition to that, this play, this play, the writing of this play uh, is so, it's so heartfelt. It's so gripping. You see these people at times struggling navigating, working through, confronting, um, sharing, listening, um, being vulnerable um, through their circumstances in life. And sometimes we need to see images reflected for us to then be able to have some answers for ourselves in life. Sometimes seeing it presented to us gives us the courage, the strength. Um, uh, it, 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 it answers things that might be burning in you or, um, or that you just go, I get it. Um, you're guaranteed to have a good time. You're guaranteed to hear some great music. Um, and we don't keep you alone. <laughs> that's the other thing. We don't keep you alone, you know? Um, so that's, uh, yeah. I, uh, we, we are always honored for anyone who comes to, uh, to come share with us. Well, I tell you, coming back to, coming back to theater, coming back to, working period um, after um, this time is um, it is special it's special uh, because so many are not here so I have family that's not here due to the effects of what is taking place during this pandemic, who I would have loved to see this production um, and just have them here. Um, so it doesn't fall lightly on me nor anyone involved with our show that we are being truly blessed um, to be here and be doing what we love and being able to create and share um, artistically. Um, yeah, I, um, yeah, sorry, I, it's really something. It's really something. So to be able um, to have this privilege because it's a privilege. Uh, let's see, something unique about this production is our space. The space that um, the play takes, um, that we're in uh, for this play. Um, it's intimate. Uh, you, you might call it intimate theater uh, because 
the audience isn't really removed from us um, the way the seating is. You're you're right up you're right up in there in the nitty gritty with us and and I find that um, in this in this kind of space for theater there's no hiding I mean th th there's really almost no hiding in theater but but definitely in a space like this there's there's no hiding and what I mean what I mean by that is that honesty that we were speaking about, that truth telling, um, you better come with it. You better come ready uh, because your audiences will, they're, they're sitting right there with you. So you're not, you're not way back there going, oh yeah, I think that, no, we, they're right here. And so if, if, it's, if it's not coming through for you, then they, <laughs> they're gonna know. They're gonna know, so you know, the work has to be done, um, and we're and, and that's the thing. We're constantly working. It, it doesn't stop once rehearsal ends. It doesn't stop once the show is opened and everything. No, it's there is more and more and more because once the audiences come, then those new nuances uh, arrive, uh, and you are developing and searching within that world. Um, uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, our space. Spaces like the Hudson and theaters like it uh, all across this city, all across this uh, nation and globe, I would say, across the world, is they are needed because um, it is that outlet. It is that place for artists to create, for folks to come and, and, and witness it and share in it. Um, and <laughs> they don't have the big funding that other businesses do. Sometimes that even, you know, that other large theaters do. Um, and so they need all the help they can get because It's needed. It's needed. It's it's those are the spaces at times where the non-published voices get to be heard. Those are the spaces where um, where voices across the board, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what minority, no matter what background, no matter what belief, where where all of that can be shared. The, Everyone needs a voice in that sense. Um, and so these theaters and these spaces are, are needed for that. Um, they're vital. They are vital, you know. When arts um, started being removed from the schools, when the funding was drastically slashed in a lot of places, um, I believe it, it, our youth suffered due to it because it's not about, oh, for someone to go be an actor or, or, or a musician, you know, it, it's about what it does for you internally. It, the arts do so much to open you up, to show you a different side of yourself. Um, so, you know, the, it, it, it's needed across the board. Hi, my name is Leonard Earl Howes and I play the character of Johnson. I will tell you this, I will remind you all, we run till November 14th. We're every Friday, Saturday and Sunday uh, over at the Hudson Theater. And, you know, we encourage everyone, please come out, come share with us, come, uh, come go on this journey. Um, of salvage, it will be, it will be life changing, um, to say the least.